Hey, what's up everyone? On this episode of Roscoe's Reef, it's all about filtration. We're going to go through theory, we're going to go through how I run my system, and how I used to do it in the past. So hopefully, there's a little something for everyone. So let's get to it. Okay, so as I stated in the opening, this video is going to be all about fil filtration, about what I use and how I used to run my system, some of the things I found out along the way as I experienced the hobby. So when everybody sets up a tank, your first course of action naturally is to go on the internet, research everything you, you can, and take what people are saying and convert it into something that will, either, will both fit your budget and also duplicate their successes. So my first idea about filtration was to have a sump running with a protein skimmer, uh, Miracle Mud, and a form of algae. I was running Chato at that time. And a dual reactor from BRS with carbon and GFO. It worked just fine, and then, of course, as you get involved in the hobby, you, for, you form an idea about more and more new tech coming out, so I wanted to run bio pellets. So, I converted a bio pellet reactor from uh, two little fishies and ran bio pellets. Now, the bio pellets didn't really do anything for me. It was no noticeable change, and reality is, it... The system I was running really didn't need it. So I took that offline, stayed with Carbon and GFO from that point on. Now, as I started getting more and more into the hobby and talking to more and more people and going to stores and seeing these gorgeous tanks in the stores, what I started doing is asking them how they ran their filtration system and if they could show it to me. So what I would do is I would go into the, you know, behind the scenes look at their, their show tanks and seeing what they were running for filtration. And I was surprised to find out that a lot of the local fish stores were running very little in the form of filtration. Uh, my first experience with that was uh, one of the fish stores I went to was running nothing but bio pellets. Protein skimmer, a way to replenish uh, evaporated water, a bio pellet reactor, and they were also running a calcium reactor to replenish calcium and alkalinity. So then the next one I visited, and it was the final one for me as far as filtration was concerned, was basically running nothing on their system but a protein skimmer and algae. Now, I figured this was worth a shot because they had in this tank gorgeous SPS corals, LPS corals, they had a huge colony of frog spawn and I figured if that was working for them maybe it would work for me. The only difference between their tank and my tank was they were running T5s and I was running LED. So let's go down below and I'll give you a close-up on exactly what I'm running and explain to you why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, so here we are down in the filtration area in my sump. As you can see, I have a protein skimmer. It's an SCA302. And I've had this for four and a half years now. It's been running pretty much 24 seven. And it's on the same pump. So to me, this skimmer has proved itself over time when I step up eventually into a bigger tank I don't think they have a bigger model this is rated for 180 gallon at a medium stock tank so so uh, I may have to say goodbye to this one because I plan on running a heavily stocked tank now the reason I left 
the skimmer cup half full is to show you there's two different ways you can run a skimmer. One is what it's running right now, which is a wet skim, where the skim mate is going to look like tea and is opaque so you can see light through it. The other way is a dry skim where the filter, or the uh, skimmer is dialed down to the point where it's basically mud in that cup. It's, that's the way I usually run it, but right now I wanted to uh, clean out the skim, the skimmer neck a little bit, and when I dialed it up to where I thought it was going to be dialed in for a dry skim mate, it started running wet, and I figured for now, I would leave it that way and let it die, let it just get all the gunk out of the skimmer and then I'll dial it back down after I clean it. Now as far as the skimmer cleaning is concerned, I clean my skim, uh, the cup, the collection cup, every time I do a water change, so that's once every other week. I clean the body of the skimmer out every three months without fail and I will also clean the pump out every three months. You can attribute the longevity of your equipment with how you maintain it. That's very important because to just let something go and not maintain it, it will fail. So maintenance is a big issue with even the components in your filtration. Stepping across to the next stage, I run a mix of algae. So what you see here is on the bottom in the back will be Chato. On the top and in the middle and all over is Bubble Calerpa. I have found the Bubble Calerpa is the best algae for me right now because it grows the fastest. Now, you may be seeing all different kinds of things going on with maybe red cyano or the, the um, different algaes growing in the tank and also the fact that the, the bottom is dirty. I leave this that way on purpose because I'm not going to get myself all upset over different things that are going on in the sump as long as they don't go up into my display tank. So let that all the algae compete for all the phosphate and nitrate it, it can and that will maintain my display tank uh, with good levels of nitrate and phosphate. This stage also houses my heaters. I have uh, two different 150 watt heaters that are sitting in, in this stage so if my pump return pump was to fail or dry out the return pump stage they're not sitting in the return pump stage where they would dry out themselves and, and, and cause the heater to either explode or fail and also this stage will never be dried out stepping across to this middle stage you'll see in the back there is a bag and that, what that is is Seachem Matrix. What I'm doing with that is I'm just letting it sit there for a couple weeks so it can build up um, the nitrifying bacteria and that will be going into Scotty's frag tank to help him with his filtration. Last stage of course is just the return area. It houses my auto top off system and my return pump. You can see here I have replaced the JBJ auto top off system with another one. I have found this one to be very reliable. My first one I bought used and it lasted me four years till it failed and I had to replace it with another one because I just trust this product with maintaining the water levels. I dosed Kalkwasser through my ATO. So therefore, I'm relying on this a lot to maintain my levels in my tank. So I have to have a quality one. And to, the, to me, this is a quality auto top off unit. So <clears throat> this is basically a real quick video in the fact that that's it. That's all I run on my system. I don't run carbon. I don't run GFO and all the algae stays in my sump and there is to me the proof is in how the tank looks and again I'm not <laughs> I don't have a big ego but I, I, 
I'm pretty sure my tank is doing well and pleasing to, to people because it does get complimented. So you've got to stick with what works for you. Don't go by me and say, well, Scott's doing it, so I can do it. You can give it a shot. It may or may not work. Every tank is different. This is just the way that I do it because others have done it the same way with just the same amount of success. And as you can see, I'm running everything in this tank. I have SPS, LPS, and <coughs> softies, and everything's maintaining at a pretty good rate and growing pretty well. Growing pretty well for me. I mean, there's other people that may want these things to grow incredible, but the rate of their growth right now to me is awesome. So when it comes down to the end of the day, you're the one that's gonna run your system. You're the one that needs to make up your own mind how you're gonna run it. But since this is a reef that's pretty much done on a budget, if I run my filtration without you know, GFO and carbon, it's less for me to worry about. So the next video we're going to do is going to be an update because you probably noticed there are some new additions to the tank as far as coral wise is concerned. So make sure you come on back for that. So that's pretty much it for this episode. And as always, this is Scott. I will see you next time around the reef tank.